welcome to this little video where I will talk about how I planned and knitted my spot sweater by Anne Wenzel. Um, my name is Hille and I live in Denmark. And just a disclaimer here, these are just suggestions. This is just what I did. And I'm sure there are millions of ways of doing this. Um, but a couple of people have approached me to ask how I planned it, what the colors were, and other things like that. One viewer said that she didn't think the spot sweater had had enough time in the spotlight in a previous video. And I, I think I kind of agreed with that in terms of what is helpful for other knitters. <sighs> Mohair. <laughs> I think I'm just often afraid of taking up too much of your time, which is sort of strange because I like watching long knitting videos and hopefully you've got your knitting with you. So. So hopefully I will be able to share something with you today that you will either find helpful or inspiring or simply interesting to you as a knitter. Let me just get up so you can see me wearing the whole thing. I'm not sure how clear it is on the video, but um, the sweater fades from brown to blue to lighter versions of brown and blue to white and i made this sweater in december 2022 and it had been in my queue since maybe december 2021 um, but i began knitting again in late november 2021 after a 25 year hiatus so i certainly did not feel um, skilled enough to tackle this sweater immediately and I actually began or ended my hiatus and began with a, another sweater by Anna Vinsel, the Diamond Jumper. So I knew her pattern lingo, if you will, and I think that's helpful. There are a couple of things that I was unsure of in the beginning in her patterns, especially when she writes something about increases or a total of. There's usually something you need to subtract. Uh, fortunately she writes the total number of stitches you're supposed to have so you can always double check but you know other um, instructions and ways of getting used to how she writes that was helpful so I knitted both her diamond jumper and her Clint classic and actually I think one or two more it's also helpful if you've already done color work I hadn't done color work this time around but I did do color work 25 years ago but even so, if you've just tried any kind of diagram or pattern like that, you should be okay. If you haven't, you know, there's there's help to be had. Okay, so one of the things that people have asked me about is the color choice. Um, and I'll insert some photos so that you can see what colors I gravitated toward and the ones I ultimately chose. I'm not going to write a whole list of all the different yarns because that's a very long list and of course I don't think you want to knit the exact replica anyway because you might gravitate toward completely different colors and you need to be able to use this anyway. But Anna Wenzel and others have talked about this as a scrap yarn project. And that's very well if you've knitted for a long time and have a lot of scrap yarn. I didn't have a lot of scrap yarn because I'd only knitted for less than a year when I began it. Um, and the yarn that I used 20 something years ago, I had long since thrown out and I wouldn't be able to use those anyway since I I was very into K facet back then bold colors and uh, intricate patterns and all sorts of things and I also I was a lot younger I had very red hair henna dyed and I had a completely different palette so I think it's important that you choose what colors make you happy what you gravitate toward and these were what I gravitated toward last December. I won't rule out that I'm going to knit it again. And then I will choose hopefully uh, quite different colors. So choose the colors that make you happy that you like. In terms of the colors, I knew I wanted a not very high contrast fade. I wanted something relatively muted and dusty because those are more or less the colors that look best on me. I don't know if you've ever tried taking those tests where your specific season, police car, 
I'm just going to close the window. I used to think those were pretty silly and, you know, superficial. Why would you want to let a test like that dictate what to wear? And of course, it's not a question of being dictated to. Um, when I took it again sometime last year, I realized that many of the colors I'm supposed to wear are actually the ones I've sometimes seen myself wearing and gone, huh, that does look better than certain other colors. You know, so I've seen other people wear really bold colors or autumn light colors, which I used to love when I had red hair, but I don't find them attractive on me now. You know, they either wash me out or just look plain weird with my hair color and my skin color. So, you know, if you can find somewhere where your preferred colors meet the ones that you actually look good in, I think that's going to give you the product that you will like the most. Having said that, I don't actually have anything brown in my closet. I don't know why. I, I don't usually wear brown. I think it's because I've thought of it as one of those autumn colors that I don't look good in. And I prefer cooler colors. But if you look at this, these are actually cool browns, you know? So I changed my mind about that. And also, I think what first got me started in terms of choosing these particular or this particular palette was a photo I saw on Instagram. There was a basket full of balls of yarn. And I thought, oh, those are exactly the colors that I would like for this project. And I'd seen somebody else post a picture of some dusty blues and dusty browns for a completely different project. It sort of got me thinking, oh, these could be, this could be the starting point. This could be the base, basic colors. So I'll just show you a few of the colors just to give you an idea. So some of the browns were these types of browns. You know, they're a little, I would call them dusty. I actually forgot to bring, um, there's a darker brown that I use for this from Knitting for Olive. Lots of yarns I used in this. The main ones were from Phil Kalana. Here's Saga, which I'd used before. Oh yeah, I'd also knitted an event since Cardi Cocoon. Um, and I'd already used Saga there. So this is a pretty soft lamb's wool. And this is Penilla, also from Phil Kalana, also in one of those dark, uh, muted, dusty browns. Let me just also get back to the main color versus contrast color. But just to show you a few other browns, um, Tilia from Phil Kalana as well, a silk mohair I used as well. And these are so close in color. This one is slightly cooler perhaps, but it's important to find colors to me anyway, that resemble each other, but are not quite the same. Then if you can see this, so that for instance, these will glide and fade over into this one. This is uh, let me just see, Dusty Moose from Knitting for Olive. And I also have the Merino in that color. So for instance, they would glide from these over into this. Oh yeah, another thing is that the main color, the bottom, if you will, of the sweater always consists of three strands of mohair, silk mohair, except for one of mine, this particular one right here. Yeah, this one is actually a Suri because I really liked the frosty uh, look of it. And you, you do need some things that are contrasty. If I just continue with the browns, I also had this Alva from Phil Kalana. And another Tilia, I think this is called Latte. And then um, if you can see, maybe you can see, uh, let me just see how some of these are sort of close. But, you know, they can provide the fade because they're close, but they're, they move towards lighter colors. This is the color powder. I just, I love this color so much. The silk mohairs are what constitute the background, the main color, all the, all the way through. You have three strands of silk mohair and you just, for each repeat here, you replace a strand of mohair with a lighter color or another color at any rate. And it's tricky because I also used blues. And also in some of the, the patterns, the contrast color, I would use maybe a combination of these two, 
you want the strands to be thick enough to be seen. Um, and I would absolutely recommend that you check out, she's got her own post, I think from October 2020, 2022. And Arenzel has a post on her Instagram page where she actually um, writes down every single row and the colors that she used. And that indicated to me how many strands she used for um, the contrasting color. So that would always be, for instance, uh, a strand of merino and a strand of silk mohair, for instance, or or a strand of this alba plus tilia. Then I just want to show you some of the blue colors. Um, again, panilla, this dusty blue from Filcalana, and knitting for olive, dusty petroleum, and the same color in silk in uh, silk mohair. Love these colors so much. I knew that I wanted these relatively prominent or sort of, yeah, in the middle because I love these. You know, if there are any colors that I want it to be most prominent, these would be the ones, as well as these two. Uh, this is soft blue, again, Knitting for Olive, Merino and Silk Mohair. And I think the palette from Knitting for Olive is probably the one I like the most out of all the yarn companies I've seen. And they're definitely the yarns that um, I began with. Also a couple of whites Oops, that I used towards the end. This is uh, cream and I used both cream and putty from Knitting for Olive. Oh yeah, this is putty. So, I mean, the contrast is so slight, but towards the end, you still want contrast in the white. I don't know if you can even see this. What I would do is I took a picture of these white silk mohairs and I made it black and white so I can see could see the contrast which of them were the darkest and then I planned my fade that way so probably it would be like that um, so this is um, you know off white and snow white tilia and cream and putty silk mohair from knitting for olive and then I also did have um, a couple of gray mohairs from Knitting for Olive simply because it was so close to the, the soft blue and I did want the fade. Mine was definitely not a scrap yarn project, I have to say. I have more than enough yarn to knit at least one more now. But that's because it would take me so much time to knit the sweater, I knew that. And also I knew that uh, if I did it right, I would probably really like it. And so I didn't just want to use random yarns that I had lying around, apart from the fact that I didn't have much yarn lying around. I did really want to have, um, you know, choose some colors on purpose. Uh, but that's obviously completely up to you. I suspect that in a few years time, I will have enough scrap yarn to be able to knit one that I like without buying all sorts of extra colors. Oh yeah, let me, let me just show you that one story. It's called Sita Story from Lana Grossa. Lana Grossa? Grossa? It's this, yeah, it's a little, it's a little more, it's actually more muted on screen than it is in real life here. It's, it's like, it's definitely one of the colors that pops the most. Um, it's this one right here. But I, I wanted it and needed it to have the fade because Someone like me, I'm tempted to just go, ooh, these are all really nice dusty blues. I want them. Yeah, but they're the same. You know, you're not going to get a fade with the same colors. So you do need the slightly more contrasty colors. I think I also had a, a gray like this, even though I started out putting gray into the mix as well, which I'd seen in that basket, the photo with the yarns, but ended up not using them because it would sort of confuse the fade and... Um, it would be both brown and blue and gray. And I, I felt I wanted to limit myself to blues and browns and then beiges and light blues, which to me are lighter versions of brown and blue. But this one I did use because it was so close to like a charcoal like blue, you know. So play around with the colors that you have. Spread them out on the floor. I'll insert pictures of how I did that spread them out on the floor, play around with them um, and see what you like. Okay, so that's how I started out. I started out with just, you know, the whole inspiration, creative brainstorming. How, what do I actually like? What would fit into this? Then I had to plan it. 
Then I had to look really closely at the pattern. So this is, this is the sweater that you see on the pattern. Okay, so this is just one main color, one contrast color. But if but what I did was I counted the rows, okay? And I, I don't mean the rows, but the pattern repeats. So one, two, three, four, five, etc. You know, so the, the six stitch row, because that's the pattern repeat. And it's in the diagram. I counted those and I looked at pictures on Instagram of people wearing the more colorful versions with the fades and also counted their rows. And the reason why I did that is so that I could plan, okay, if I have, let's say I have 20 rows, I think I ended up having maybe 22. If that's what I have, then I need maybe um, seven rows of dark, seven rows of medium, seven rows of light. Because I figured if I didn't do that, then maybe I would be going into the, ooh, these are all the colors I love, and this is dusty petroleum, and ooh, I love that. And by the time, I needed to actually begin the fade into medium colors. I would be too far down and then there would be no room. It would be an unbalanced fade, if you will, or else I would have to knit the sweater way too long. So I did a lot of math. I, I'm not sure it's actually math, but planning to begin with. I'm a little embarrassed to show you this paper because um, I think I spilled both water and coffee, if not wine on it at some point, but okay. First, I looked at her and events page with all the colors to get an indication of, as I said, the number of color changes, just as an indication because I didn't follow it, and the number of yarns or strands per repeat, and also um, how many different colors she had. I counted the number of different yarns so that I had some kind of inkling of how many different color changes do I need here in order to make this an interesting look. Because otherwise I would be tempted to just mosey around in all the dusty blues and there wouldn't be a huge contrast. I made this kind of diagram based on what I'd seen on her um, Instagram page. So here I wrote, for instance, brown. It says brown in the margin, which means that's this part up here. Then this is before I started knitting. This is a note to myself where I say transition to dark blue about here after the first five pattern repeats. And then lighter blue here, then beige here, then white here. Because if, if I didn't do that, there would be uh, an imbalance. There would be, you know, it would be too dark or too brown or not enough white towards the very end. And it would look, um, yeah, unharmonious. And I was very interested in having enough of all the colors. So what I did was for each, this was what I did before I started knitting. I had an, an overall idea that I wanted, which browns I wanted as the main color and what would look good as the contrast color. So for instance, I had one of the background main color stripes would be this combination. And then I thought, ooh, okay. Um, I think one of the first, it's difficult to see here, one of the first colors I used as contrast colors was this combination. So this on top of this. And then I faded gradually. I say, I think I kept this for two or three rows or with others. You know, I didn't change it all the way through. And then I choose, chose to move to that one. Then I changed one of these. Can I also just say I unraveled quite a bit. You got to be either very uh, tolerant of the look or be willing to unravel because you don't necessarily get the look that you thought. This was what I had planned in advance. This was what I actually ended up knitting. What I wrote here, for instance, stripe one, Saga brown, Tilia brown, and then another canard brown, silk mohair. That would be A. And then B, I wrote... Knitting for Olive, Dusty Petroleum, Knitting for Olive, Silk Mohair. Okay, so that would be my first stripe up here, my first pattern repeat. And then I wrote gradually as I moved along. And the reason why I wrote this was partly so that I could see, okay, where am I going with this? Am I following, am I following the diagram that I had to begin with? By the time I got down here, it was really important to write down because... 
Otherwise, I would forget by the time I got to the sleeves. You know, so from here down, it was crucial, you could say. Um, so I've never taken this many notes for any project ever. And I'm not saying you have to at all. It's just what I wanted because I knew I wanted this particular look. What is also important to say is something about the fit. I thought a lot about this beforehand because I had seen a video that she would put out where she altered the neck from the original because she said that some people had complained that the neck was too sort of high up like that. She shows a video on her channel where she shows how you can pick up further down, uh, which is like kind of a once you're already done, presumably even once you've knitted the collar and you think it's too tight, do you then rip it back out and start again? Of course, since I was starting this from scratch, I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to be better from the beginning. So in the pattern, she asks you to cast on. Yeah, she you cast on in the back and then you do a lot of sort of shaping back and forth until finally you meet down here and then you begin knitting down. But she asks you to, to cast on on 4.5 millimeter needles. I forget what that is in English. Is that like a six maybe? Or a US six? I forget. 4.5 millimeter needles is what she suggests. I cast on on six millimeter needles. The reason why I did that is that she knits a lot more loosely than I do. I'm a relatively tight knitter and I didn't want this, the collar like that. You know, for, for one thing, I would feel it choked me. For another, I'm not very good at having silk mohair or woolly wools right against uh, the skin on my neck. Um, so I wanted it a little more loose and I also like that it stands up just a tiny bit. So I cast on uh, on a needle that's uh, one and a half sizes larger. And what I also have to say, when I read the pattern, and I, I cast on and I, I don't know what I did, but I did something wrong. Okay, so I'm just gonna show the diagram really quickly because I'm not allowed to show it, but it looks something like that. What I found out after I don't know how many tries is that the increases that she wants you to do are already part of the diagram, but the raglan stitch between uh, the different panels are not part of the diagram. And that's fine, except it doesn't say so in the pattern. So it took me a long time to figure that out. The way in which I realized this after having tried and cast on several times and I didn't end up with the right stitch number is that I watched her video where she begins. I think actually she's got three or four videos. Let me just check. She's got four videos for the beginning of the spot sweater and you absolutely should watch those if you're in any way in doubt, just to know that you're on the right track because you don't want to have to start over and over. And also because it's, to me, it wasn't exactly logical, I have to say. What I did was I watched the videos and then I went back to the pattern and then I wrote here, I wrote video one and then I wrote video two, video three, because some of the things that, that it says tells you to do here was not necessarily logical, but once I'd seen what she meant, I'm a very visual person. I, when I see somebody do it, I'm like, oh, okay. Then I go back. To, actually, I'm also a very linguistic person, which is weird, but something like this, I really do need to see somebody demonstrating how to do it. And, you know, in, on every row, I sort of did a little sort of check, check, because I really needed to keep my wits about me in the beginning. It's only in the beginning, actually, because after that, it's relatively smooth sailing. Another thing about fit that I should mention is that this is not a very low raglan. It's a low raglan. If I'd continued knitting in my size, it would have been maybe down to here, like very bat wing like. And I could see that of photos where people were standing like this. And I figured for one thing, it would annoy me that the sleeve or that the whole body would follow me whenever I moved my arm. For another, I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to put on a coat. Um, so what I did was I knitted the size two in general. I have to say also, I went up half a needle size for the body because I've experienced before that I knit quite a bit more tightly than she does. However, I don't knit color work necessarily tight um, because I do tend to sort of stretch the floats 
quite nicely, which I needed to do here. But I cast on for a size two, however, with the larger needle and knitted the whole thing on a half a size larger needle than she did. But when it came to the increasing the in the raglan and separating uh, the sleeves and the body, I stopped after the first size because then it would be just a bit higher up. If if you I, I think if you want it even higher up than this, it's not very high up. But if you want it higher up, you could stop even further. And then when you pick up stitches beneath the sleeve, once you begin the body, you can just pick up a few more. You can pick up like one more uh, little box of pattern repeat. That would that would still give you the body width, but not the very wide and deep sleeves or yoke. Anyway, that's that's what I did. One more thing or a couple of more things. I initially wanted the color to be even darker and then I tried knitting it with the darkest color I had, which was a, I think it's called Brown Bear by Knitting for Olive, the Merino, because I didn't want to buy the silk mohair also because I had the others. There comes a point when you just don't want to buy any more silk mohair from Knitting for Olive. But I tried knitting the color with the Merino and one or two more strands of silk more and it became too stiff it was just like tick. it stood up like that and it looked thicker and weird compared to the rest here so i had to rip that back and i'd already sewn it down i think i tried even once more just with a merino without silk mohair still wrong still a fail ripped it back and then i had to um be content with uh, a color that had pretty much the same color as this up here. Had money but no issue, I would have gotten hold of the silk mohair brown bear and made it even darker. I think she does have a very dark orange in one of hers and eventually and looks pretty cool. Uh, you know, note for a future me if ever I knit it again. Something else is that um, when I knitted the bottom, as you can see here, I was really unsure when to stop. I could easily have gone with one more row of white, perhaps, but then the last two or the last row, the main color and the last row and the ribbing would be the same. You know, there would be no fade. And I really did want the fade all the way through. So again, you really need to plan ahead, write down uh, in advance so that you don't suddenly sit there with four rows left and you're already at your lightest color. Something else to take into consideration is that the sleeves, I don't know if you can see this, but of course the sleeves are longer, which means you need to do more pattern repeats on the sleeves. I hadn't really thought of that. So you can see this is the end of the body. This is the end of the sleeve. So here my white begins up here. I had to insert, I think, two more panels. I could actually have inserted three or four more if I wanted those really long sort of grungy looking sleeves that a lot of people are going for and I do like them but that would again mean white all the way down here and there wouldn't be a fade because I mean how much can you fade a white color I couldn't with the whites I had so I only put in two extras and I also considered you know which contrast color do you want okay so I did a mix of browns and blues the first time when I then when I'd washed and blocked it, it was the sleeve was about here, and I was not happy with that. So I had the option of either ripping up, ripping back the ribbing, adding something else again in white, or which is the option I chose, or blocking it again. And instead of, I only blocked like the sleeves. I think the second time, and instead of putting it on the blocking mat, I hung it up on a hanger so that the sleeves would sort of pull and become a little longer and that worked. So this is the length I like. Who knew? You know, all sorts of little tricks will help you. And I also actually, before I, I think it was about here, maybe, I, for, I forget where I was, but I did block it, wash it and block it before I was maybe half done because I didn't know how much it was gonna stretch. And I didn't know how long it was going to be. Yeah, I was probably about here. And I thought, how long do I want this? How much is it going to stretch uh, when I wash it and block it? Because I'd done a swatch to get gauge, but I hadn't washed it. And also, 
you know, if you make a little swatch, it's going to stretch maybe a few millimeters. So you can't really tell in a small swatch how much it's going to stretch. At least I can't. So um, do it halfway through. It's, it's not going to matter. Uh, let me see. Are there other things that could be useful to know for this? It's a very warm sweater, I have to say. Uh, so don't be fooled by all the light fluffy mohair that yeah if you've knitted with mohair before you know that it's really warm I think that's about it when it comes to practical advice and inspiration how I planned it how I ended up knitting it I've been putting away some yarns for the Robinia Cal which I saw an event put up about a month ago and since then I've seen so many people that are on board with the Robinia Cal that I've now set it aside because I'm the kind of person that if I see it all over the place I'm, I don't want to I feel satiated by the pattern by the time I start knitting it and I, I, do, I don't want to do that I think this was actually in a knit along the spot sweater um, last year or the year before and of course I wasn't on Instagram until February 2022 I didn't realize there was such thing as knitting Instagram can you believe it um so so that was good because then I would have been sort of fed up with it. I need to not have seen too many versions of a pattern because otherwise it's like I've already knitted it myself. I've seen it so much. I think that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to knit it in this particular version because I hadn't seen it in that version. But either way, you know, choose colors that you love and that you feel um, happy about knitting in. Check all the different versions on either Instagram or Ravelry to get inspiration because you know we get inspiration from other people from all sorts of crazy places. So these are perhaps tips and tricks and ideas or suggestions that you can use for any color work that has a fade where you want to stay within a certain color palette. The classic mohair in your lip gloss problem. So yeah, that was basically it. If you've been contemplating knitting the spot sweater, I hope you will feel like you are perhaps one step closer to planning it. If this all sounds really elaborate, that's because it is, or it was for me. It doesn't have to be. This is just because, probably because I was very intent on one particular look. Um, and you don't need be. If you're the type of person that will just go, eh, I'll see what happens. and if you even want to use an eventless rule of not unraveling, which obviously I completely ignored, then, you know, excellent. I think if I'm to do it again, hmm, I think I would plan it again. Because otherwise I would probably be unraveling too much if I wasn't happy with the look of it. And I think the reason why an eventless can say, don't unravel is that she's so much more experienced she's knitted so much she's a knitting pattern designer of course so she knows uh, intuitively what colors look good together and us mortals we don't necessarily know that I'm you know you get the hang of it oh one more thing I definitely need to tell you is that even if you want a low contrast version like mine compared to some of the really popping very contrasty versions be careful that you don't be all ooh I like my browns or I like my dark blues and then you've knitted six rows and you can see no difference I've seen one version in dark blue where this top part doesn't look like it has stripes at all so you can manipulate the view of it or the look of it by only changing the contrast color so that these actually look like different stripes even though they have the same background color but you want to make sure and see I didn't I didn't really do that very properly. You want to make sure that there's yarn that the yarn will actually show up. The contrast color will actually show up. And some of these I was more successful with than others, of course. Um, so be sure not even if you want a low contrast version, be sure that there's still some contrast. Oh, and maybe I should say this also. Maybe that's not obvious, but I made the fade in both the the main color and the contrast color because I didn't want it to be the same. I've seen some people who make the same contrast color, use the same contrast color all the way through. And it, the fade is just in the main color. I felt it would be more challenging and also prettier uh, to have the contrast color fade as well. 
However, you still want to be able to see it, you know, and up here, obviously that's white. So that's not a fade, but you can't keep on using the same colors for the fade. It would just be too samey samey, you know? So of course there are no rules. Go for whatever you like. If you like the look of it, excellent. Um, play around with it, but maybe plan just a little so that you can be a little more sure of getting the result that you want. Maybe put together a little sort of mood board or vision board, or at least have some images um, of the colors that you would like to use, because then you can use that to check out what is available at your local yarn store or online with the, the companies that you like. You know, if you're into bold colors, you'll probably know where to look. Chaos Gan in, in um, Denmark, which La bien also sells, or La bien own colors. There are some fantastic bold colors there, but also some muted colors. And if you want lots of dusty muted colors, Knitting for Olive has a lot of really excellent suggestions, also in pinks, if you're into that. And, you know, check Phil Kalana. Uh, their yarns are reasonably priced. You know, you can, you can mix all sorts of yarn brands, so you don't have to stick to the same brands as long as they have pretty much the same. Yeah, you would, Americans would say weight. In Denmark, we'd say um, thickness, maybe, so that you, it can look pretty similar. But even mine, they're not the same all the way through. So, yeah, gosh, this was a lot longer than I expected it to be considering it's just about one sweater i hope you found some of this useful or interesting or inspiring and if you plan to knit a spot sweater or if you've already knitted a spot sweater and you have ideas by all means uh let me know i'd love to know the color combinations you've considered or a fade in another sweater i really like the idea of doing a fade so this is one of the best patterns for um, putting your own imprint on it to have you know so you you can get to be much more creative in this it may require a bit of planning but you can make a version that nobody else has so that it's not just you mindlessly following some designer's pattern choosing the exact same yarn and colors which of course I do as well because oh we like the version that we've seen but it's really nice also to get your own um, personality in there and choose the colors that you love. And also, is it just me? Or as I said, I haven't, I don't have anything brown in my wardrobe, but don't you find, at least I find, that I want to knit with other colors. I don't just want to knit with the blacks and grays and whites that I have in my wardrobe. And this is, you know, I'm expanding this as I go, I have to say. It's much more fun to play around with colors. You don't want to knit the same gray sweater every time. At least I don't. So this was also a bit of a departure for me and I, I loved it. I thought it was really interesting. You may want to have another project on the go that is just stockinette or something. Oh, and another thing. As I said, I knitted this in the month of December and those evenings here in Denmark were really dark and sometimes I had to stop. I think I was knitting on something else as well because I just couldn't see. I couldn't see if the colors matched each other or looked good. I couldn't see if I could see the contrast color. So I would have sometimes have to wait until the next day and look in what passed for daylight here and to see, oh yeah, that looks pretty good or no, that doesn't work at all. You know, so um, while it is a sweater that you want to wear during the winter because it's warm, it's not necessarily a sweater you can knit during uh, those dark winter evenings, even with even with a good light. That would just be in a little ring of light on the sweater, but you needed like daylight all around it. So I found that was really necessary. So thank you so much for watching, for bearing with me for, oh my God, a very long time. I wish you very happy knitting and Let's remember to knit what brings us joy in the colors that bring us joy, regardless of what colors other people knit. There's no right or wrong in this. Actually, there's no wrong in this. There's a lot of right. It's whatever makes you happy. Thank you for watching. <laughs>